So anyways, the, the other one is your, your typical mulches, uh, your wood chip mulch, sawdust. Uh, here's, some, here's some of the places I've, I've been to in various parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas and so forth. Uh, works great. Um, in, in regular production, you have the option of coming by with a post-emerge herbicide and keeping all the weeds and grasses from creeping in there. The problem in organic is you, you probably still have to come in with a weed eater and uh, mow the alleyways and do some weeding and, and, and keep the weeds from going crazy and really get them before they do uh, get established. That's the trick. Just get them when they're young. And so that's it. So uh, there's um, uh, a switch over on computers. I had some other slides of some, some various sort of hay mulches and straw mulches. But um, we do have a, a miscanthus grass at our research farm that is a sterile hybrid and it's called giant miscanthus it's like you know 10 or 12 feet tall it makes an outrageous amount of biomass you could make for on and we and we chop it for on farm mulch and for our compost feedstock um, but it does not produce seed okay so you'll see miscanthus over in the Appalachians that's grown on the roadside it's taken over it's become invasive this stuff does not become invasive because the seed is sterile <coughs> so we had it for a biomass research, but there is a nursery outfit down in Mississippi, I believe, that is, you can order it by mail order and get some starts. And what I would do is I would get starts and I would take them and I would grow them up in a nursery. And Ken, who was here, I think, uh, yeah, so I think he mentioned, uh, or maybe someone else mentioned that they, they had uh, gotten their, uh, their nursery plants, uh, some blueberry nursery plants, young, and put them into three gallon pots and grew them up into really nice sized plants before we put them in the field. I would do the same thing with the miscanthus plugs. I would buy plugs, I would grow them up in really nice big plants before, and then I would keep on dividing them and then plant them out in the field. So finally, uh, the last thing I wanna mention is this weed barrier. Um, when I did organic blueberries, um, it was a real learning curve. And at the tail end of it, I, I mean, I learned a lot about uh, many things about fixing the tractors that are broken down and et cetera. But it was all, the bottom line, it was the weed control that was the hardest part about doing it. And so um, what I realized that, uh, after that was that this technology really would have been perfect and that's what I have promoted. I've gotten dozens and dozens of growers to, into weed barriers for all kinds of different horticultural crops and they all think it's great. The reason is it creates a low maintenance production system. So that's, um, this is a, a hasket berry planting we have at the farm. You can see the, that's a six foot wide weed barrier. You could use a four foot wide weed barrier, for example, in blueberries and do the grass alleyway. Um, and then here's kind of a modified system. I think John Strang mentioned that, the zipper system, where you have a little bigger opening in the middle and put more mulch around the, right where the plant is. The only place that weeds will grow on this weed barrier is where the hole is, where the plant is. They, weeds will not grow through the weed barrier. Even Johnson grass will not come up through the weed barrier. However, I do want to give you some tips. And for example, you do not place organic mulch on top of the weed barrier. Do not do that. Yeah, and this is a real uh, common in landscapes. They do that. But in, in farming, you do not want to do that. Why? because weed seeds will blow onto the mulch and when it rains and it's moist, they'll germinate in the mulch and the roots will go down and peg through the weed barrier and now you've got a weed problem on top of the weed barrier. So keep mulch off of it, keep grass and soil off the edge of the weed barrier. Uh, let's see, use a propane torch to cut it and, and to cut your holes where the weed barrier, where the plant's gonna go in. If you do use scissors uh, to cut the edges, fold it over and tack it down because it'll tear like cloth will tear. Uh, use, a, use plenty of landscape staples every two to four feet. The reason is, is that you want to take that when you're mowing your grass out of the way, you just take your mower deck, put the wheel on the weed barrier and zip right over it. And you can mow that grass without injuring the weed barrier. It won't tear up at all if it's down nice and tucked in. One of, the, one of the concepts that's behind this is with the establishment of cane fruits and with uh, like a long-term shrub like a blueberry and especially with trees is what is known as the survival and establishment period. The survival period is the first three years. 
The plant is either going to make it or it's not, or it's going to be thrifty or it's going to be stunted. If you have a, a plant that is stunted, it will never catch up with a thrifty plant. That's just a fact. And so the survival period is the first three years, and that is really important for weed control and keeping the weeds away from the plant. The establishment period goes through the whole five-year period. After that period, if you have no weed barrier and you have grass grow up to the trunk or to the canes, I mean, even though it may not be desirable for management, it will not uh, impact that plant so much. I mean, it can withstand it. It will have been established so much that it can now, uh, you know, live in that kind of a situation. And if you have an established planting, you would, uh, you would actually do that. You would take a, take a, you know, a narrower piece of weed bear on one side and tuck it up, and then come in from this side and tuck it up. You pin them together between the two plants, but right where the plant is, there'd be, a, there'd be a hole there. And that's, honestly, that is the only place where you're going to have weedies, weeds coming up through there. This weed bear is very effective. So I think the weed barrier has been a revolution, in my opinion, for perennial organic production of tree crops and berry crops. Uh, so there you go.